And I want to thank my colleague, Governor Evers. He, oh, you, where are you, Gov? One of the best governors in the country. And she's sitting next to Congress. He's sitting next to Congresswoman Moore. Stand up, Congresswoman. And she can tell you whatever she tells me, I do. <laughs> it's great to see you, kiddo. And also, uh, I want Mayor Johnson, thanks for the passport into the city. I appreciate it very much. And County Executive Crowley is here. And I want to thank Senator, a good friend of mine, Tammy Baldwin, who couldn't be here today. And I want to thank everyone here at Milwaukee's Black Chamber of Commerce for your partnership across the board on everything we've been working on. I come from a state that has the eighth largest black population in the country. And uh, as they say, the saying goes, where I come, you bring me to the dance early on. Your proof that black small businesses with the talent and integrity and ingenuity are the engines and the glue that hold communities together. And I mean that sincerely. You hold communities together. You're the ones that sponsor the Little League teams. You're the one that involved in the church events. You're the ones that hold the community together and you keep it going. You keep it moving. And every new business opening is a, is a vote for hope. Just hope. Hope. You know, you're making the American economy stronger and our nation more competitive. I'm here today to talk about something that doesn't get enough attention. I'm here to celebrate the progress we're making to support black small businesses here and around the country. When black small businesses grow, everything benefits. The community benefits. Everyone benefits. Not a joke. And it gives hope and prospects for people. Since Kamala and I entered office, America has filed a record number of, in less than three years, 15 million new job, new applications to start new business. 15 million. It's led to the fastest growth in black business ownership in over 30 years. Across the country, wages for workers are up. Black wealth is a record up record 60 percent since the pandemic. So many of you look. And by the way, we're just, I mean this sincere from the bottom of my heart, we're just getting started. We're just getting so, so many of you had the vision and took the risk to open businesses and you bet on yourself. Together, we're transforming the economy by investing in all of America and all Americans. When I said, when I ran, if I was elected, I'd represent everyone. Blue, red, no matter what color the state was, wherever it was, we'd recommend because think, think about it. Think of all the businesses that you know about throughout the Midwest and back in my way as well that closed down because you had corporations decide they'd get cheaper labor across the sea. You can move somewhere else. So they sent the jobs overseas and brought the product back home. And we changed that so supply chain. We're sending, we're having the jobs here and sending product overseas. <laughs> and from the time I got involved in public life, <clears throat> I've only been around a few years. <laughs> oh, bless me, Father. Anyway. <clears throat> We're doing it by building an economy from the middle out and the bottom up, not the top down. Not a whole lot trickled down on my dad's kitchen table when the top down economy. But when you mill from the build, when you increase the middle class, the poor have a shot and the wealthy still do very well. The middle class does well and we all do well. That's what we call Bidenomics. This <laughs> And by the way, so far, we've created 14 million new jobs, more jobs in three years than any president's created in four years in history. <clears throat> this is a fundamental break from trickle-down economics, economics that supercharged my, my uh, was, was supercharged by my predecessor, the guy who thinks we're polluting the blood of Americans these days. He cut taxes for the wealthy and big corporations, shipped good-paying jobs overseas, shrank public investment in infrastructure and education. We used to have the number one infrastructure in the world. Now we're number 16 or 17. We're changing that. We 
hollowed out communities, leaving too many Americans behind. It's a cycle folks on 30th Street Carter here in Milwaukee know well. It's an area where it says it became the backbone of Milwaukee's industrial right might. 10,000 black people migrated, tens of thousands migrated from the south to the middle of the country, to Milwaukee, for good paying manufacturing jobs. Then decades of discrimination and trickle down economics left communities like this one behind. But today we're making sure Milwaukee is coming back and all of Milwaukee coming back. <laughs> mark my word. <clears throat> In Milwaukee, business applications are up 70 percent compared before the pandemic. The share of black people employed in Milwaukee in 2022 was the highest in more than a decade. But the investments aren't just about jobs. The investments are making — offer opportunity, hope to communities to fully participate in the economy. I vowed that we'd invest in all of America, and that's what we're doing. We're leaving no one behind. No one need be left behind. Let me give you a clear example. We all know, as my introducer told me, to told you guys, we all know exposure to lead water pipes is hazardous to our health, especially to children's health. It can damage the brains and kidneys, for real. Lead exposure disproportionately affects low-income communities and disproportionately affects people of color. This is the United States of America, for God's sake. Everyone should be able to turn out a faucet and know whatever they're drinking was clean and pure and not have to worry about it. <laughs> Through the historic bipartisan infrastructure law, my administration is investing $15 billion to replace every lead pipe in every community in this country. And our goal, our goal is to do that. And I want to thank Kamala. I want to thank Kamala for leading this effort. But, you know, your United States Senator Ron Johnson voted against this law. Well, I tell you what, with, with your help, the great governor and congresswoman in the state, they already received $130 million to do this work so far. <clears throat> Before I came to Milwaukee, Milwaukee was slated to take over 60 years to replace the lead pipes. But last month, we proposed a new rule. It's going to require the water systems in Milwaukee to be fully replaced with every one of them within 10 years. <laughs> 10 years instead of 60. Think of the lives saved. Think of the jobs and opportunities for small business owners like Rashawn, replacing lead pipes in homes and daycare centers and schools. We're just getting started. And so we are today announcing Milwaukee will be one of 22 communities in the country competing for tens of millions of dollars in federal grants to grow small businesses, create good-paying jobs, and build factories of the future. It matters. I'm also increasing the share of federal contract dollars going to small disadvantaged businesses from what was roughly 10 percent when I came to office to 25 per to, to 15 percent. Here's how it works. Back in the 30s, it wasn't just that Roosevelt talked about unions being supported. They also had a rule that passed that very few presidents, including Democrats, paid much attention to, that every dollar a president gets to spend — for example, the Appropriation Committee and the Congress passes redoing decks of aircraft carriers — the president gets to pick who does that job, who does that job, all those federal programs. Well, guess what? The vast majority are supposed to be all American and supposed to be all American products. And guess what? Hardly anybody paid attention. But I'm paying attention. It's got, we're investing in America and American workers. In 2022 alone, we awarded nearly $70 billion to small disadvantaged businesses because of that law. Through the American Rescue Plan, another law that your distinguished senator voted against, we invested nearly $80 million in Wisconsin for the State Small Business Cre Credit Initiative, helping countless small businesses grow. Through the Small Business Administration, we've delivered $50 billion in capital this past year to small businesses across the country, doubling the number and the value of Black-owned small businesses since 2020.
I know that's a lot, and I'm talking to the Black Chamber of Commerce for thanking them for helping small business owners learn how to benefit from these transformative investments. I used to have a friend named Pete McLaughlin, who was a great ball player at Providence College, and he used to say, you got to know how to know. You got to know how to know. And that's why I want to thank the Chamber here for teaching people how to know what's available to them. All this groundbreaking work is producing groundbreaking results. Record job creation, historic economic growth. We have among the lowest inflation rates of any major economy in the, on this earth. We're fighting a lower cost to give folks just a little bit more breathing room, as my dad used to say. But let's be clear. Republicans are against so many critical actions that help working and middle class people, especially black Americans. Just remember how the pandemic hit black businesses especially hard. How my predecessor on his watch Women and minority-owned small businesses found themselves last in line to access an emergency relief through programs like the Paycheck Protection Program. On my watch, energy and emergency relief went to minority-owned businesses first, not last. We also, when I came to office, we cut black child poverty in half because of the child tax credit. As I tried to extend it, every single Republican Congress in Congress voted against continuing the program. But I'm not giving up till we get it back. Yeah. And by the way, all the data shows it saves the economy money. The spending on child poverty saves money in health care, educate a whole range of things. This is not a, a down the drain. It generates growth. We drafted and I signed a law, that, a law that will lower prescription drug costs significantly for all Americans. You know, I was at a town meeting in Northern Virginia, and I was holding a meeting. This is two years ago. I've been fighting Big Pharma for a long time. You know, if you buy, if you go to whatever your, your, your provider, any drug you have to take, any prescription drug, and you decide you're going to buy it here in Milwaukee, or you're going to buy it in Toronto, Canada, or Paris, France, or Budapest, guess what? You're going to pay two to three times as much for the prescription. Same company, same American manufacturer, same thing. Because Medicare pays for it for most, in most cases. And guess what? We're not — just if you're at the VA and you get the prescription drug, they negotiate the price with the uh, — with, with the pharmaceutical company. Well, they passed laws earlier, way on. I've been fighting it for over 35 years to say you can't negotiate — Medicare can't negotiate for drug prices for, for — and, by the way, that's how they make enormous amounts of money. And, by the way, every one of my Republican colleagues voted against this one. And now they're trying to cut Medicare, trying to cut Medicaid and Social Security. Your own Senator Johnson calls Social Security a, quote, Ponzi scheme. Are you kidding me? You know, from the time you get your first paycheck, you pay into Social Security your whole life. These are the same Republicans who enact the tax cuts to overwhelmingly benefit the wealthy to the tune of $2 trillion additional deficit. There are also something else that's happening. There are some in this country who are waging a full-on attack of black economic opportunity. They're denying economic opportunity when it comes to higher education, starting a business, keeping businesses open. That's what the, that's how you generate economic opportunity. You educate people. And folks, by the way, I uh, I went to the Supreme Court my to eliminate student debt that was out there. And guess what? The Supreme Court ruled against, but I still got 136 million people debt relieved. Because guess what? The interest they're paying on that debt is something that prevents them from buying a home, starting a business, all those things. Now, that's on top of easing black history and banning books, erasing black history and banning books. Did you ever think you'd live in a country, now all kidding aside, growing up, where we're banning books, book banning in, in grade schools and high schools? I think it's unconscionable. 
These attacks hurt all Americans because investing in black economic prosperity lifts everybody up. You know, we always believe diversity is our strength as a nation. I don't believe, as the president, former president said again yesterday, that immigrants are polluting, polluting our blood. The economy in our nation is stronger when we're tapping into the full, full range of talents in this nation. My administration is going to continue to fight for these, to fight these attacks because everyone deserves a fair shot, just a shot. Let me close with this. You know, for all we've done, the real heroes of this story are you, the American people, not a joke, not a joke. Hardworking people like Rashawn of Hero Plumbing here in Milwaukee, in the thousands of towns all across America, there's at least thousands of stories of revival and renewal, hope and optimism because people aren't giving up. Pride in your work and your family and your town. Pride in this nation. That's what I see no matter where I go in this country. That's why I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I've never been more optimistic about America's prospects and America's future than I am today. You just have to remember who we are. We are the United States of America. And there is nothing, there is nothing beyond our capacity if we work together, if we work together. That's, and by the way, as I said, we're the only country in the world that out of every crisis, we've come out stronger than we went in. Remember, remember who we are. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you.